contingent claims, state prices, risk neutral probabilities. We're going to take a little deeper look at discount factors, our basic pricing ideas, uh, and connect them to some other ideas that are very useful. So states and complete markets. Um, there's a lot of different words here, and we've got to learn what these words and ideas mean. So let's start with states of nature. Uh, we've already thought about things that way, and uh, there are states of nature. I'll use little s, one, two, up to capital S, to denote the possibilities of things that could happen. Simplest, uh, looking at tomorrow, it could rain or it could shine. Two possibilities of what could happen. Of course, this is finance, so another classic example, we'll think of the states of nature, the things that could happen as the different values of the S&P 500, and think about what happens if the S&P 500 goes up and goes down. Contingent claims. A very special kind of asset. Uh, it's a contingent claim, and it pays one unit in one state and nothing in any other state. And it has a contingent claims price, which I call PC for a contingent claim. PC of S tells us the price in any state S. So for example, I drew a case here where there's four possible states. Uh, the contingent claim to state two pays one unit in state two, nothing in any other state. And it has a price, contingent claims price, PC of two. So thinking about it, typically a contingent claims price will be a number less than one. You only get any money if one state occurs, and that, uh, so the contingent claims price will be lower than, uh, and it'll reflect the probability of that state happening. It'll be typically be a, a, a smaller number. Not always, but typically. A complete market is a market structure where you can buy all possible contingent claims. If there's four states in nature, you can buy consumption delivered in each state of nature uh, individually. Uh, now that need not be uh, directly traded. A complete market is also one where you can synthesize a contingent claim to every state of nature. And in that sense, get anything that you could possibly want. An incomplete market is a market that doesn't have that many different uh, securities traded. Uh, where not all contingent claims are available. So, for example, uh, we'll model a stock uh, in, in many cases, in this binomial model. You put $1 in and you get U out, maybe $1.20, or D out, uh, maybe $0.90, cents, depending on, on what happens. If that's the only asset available, you have an incomplete market. You have to buy this bundle. You can't get, you can't get either U or D separately. You can't move your money into U or D or, or D. So sometimes you can create contingent claims from other underlying securities, and that's called spanning. If you can span contingent claims uh, with other securities, uh, then you can create them even if they don't exist. So here's an example. To continue our example, uh, a bond would be you put in $1 and you get RF in each state. And a good numerical example is, is just if the interest rate is zero, you put in a dollar, you get out a dollar in each state. Now, if you have both a bond and a stock, and you can take portfolios of the bond of the stock, then you can synthesize a contingent claim by long short positions in the bond and the stock. And, and you're going to do that as one of your first problems, just to check that that, that makes sense to you. Uh, spanning can also happen not just by the number of securities equaling the number of states, and, and you can see, obviously, a sort of linear independence that you need, but you can have spanning by dynamic trading as well. So uh, here's an example. Suppose that there are two steps, time 0, 1, and 2, and the investor can retrade at time 1. Then it turns out that if you have two securities, this stock and this bond, and you can retrade at time 1, then you can span all four states of nature, create four contingent claims out of two securities and the opportunity to retrade them. So when we say complete markets in finance, that's often a shorthand. Obviously, markets are not complete because you can't buy uh, claims on rain and sun tomorrow. But we'll often refer to a market as complete if all claims on, for example, the S&P 500 going up and down are traded, even though claims on rain are traded. So that's, in some sense, complete enough, and we use the complete word in, in that case. Uh, one of the biggest cases to keep in mind where this complete business comes up is in option pricing. So here, for this, the state will be the value of the S&P 500 at, at time capital T. And I've drawn a couple of assets here. 
we typically think here's on the x-axis is the value of the S&P 500 to capital T, and a bunch of different other payoffs can be given by the graphs of their value as a function of state. That's what we've done here too, value as a function of state. So a stock, for example, the S&P 500 itself is just the 45 degree line. As, a, as the value goes up, the value of that payo go, payoff goes up. A bond pays off the same amount no matter what happens to the S&P 500. A call option uh, pays off nothing until the strike price and then pays off linearly. And a contingent claim is a security that gives you a payoff, uh, a, a unit payoff when and only when the S&P 500 hits a specific value. So a, a complete a, a question is, can we get any shape of payoff? Can we get any function? And so here we have some classic spanning theorems. If you have all call and put options available, then you can synthesize any contingent claim. And of course, from any contingent claim, you can synthesize any function, any payoff you'd like. So all call and put options are, allow you to synthesize any contingent claim. Similarly, we have the Black-Scholes formula and that, that idea behind option pricing, where in, in that situation, dynamic trading of just a stock and a bond uh, allows you not just four states of nature, but you can achieve all contingent claims and any function. So when we say complete markets, markets can be complete because contingent claims are traded. They're not in reality. Markets can be complete, at least complete on some security, uh, if there's a sufficiently rich set of securities or a sufficiently rich set of trading opportunities.